This my conference will now be recorded. Commissioner Walk. Okay. Anybody hear from Commissioner Walk? He was with us just shortly before. I don't see him on the call yet. There he is. All right, Mike, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? I We can. All right. Thank you, Randy, for that. And I'd like to welcome everybody to the February 17th meeting of the South Whitehall Township Board of Commissioners. Um, Renee, can we please start everything off with a roll call? Sure, Commissioner Walk. Here. Commissioner Mobilio. Commissioner Sutton. Here. Commissioner Kelly. Here. Commissioner Morgan. Here. All right. The gang's all here. Next, um, if everybody would please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. We have our flag right here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. I would like to note that all public sessions of the South Whitehall Township Board of Commissioners are electronically recorded, filed, and posted on board docs for the public's access. I'd also like to note that the board did meet in executive session on February 5th, um, February 10th, and also again um, prior to this meeting, February 17th, to discuss personnel and legal matters. With that being said, we're going to move right into our agenda this evening. And first on our agenda for consideration and possible action are our meeting minutes from February 3rd. I'll give the board um, a chance to look at those if they have not already. Were there any questions or comments from the board on the February 3rd meeting minutes? Matt, can you still not hear anybody? Are you okay? I think Matt had to jump off and jump back on. He was having audio problems. Okay, I think he jumped back on. All right, any questions or comments? None from the board? On the meeting minutes, do I hear a motion to move forward with approval of the February 3rd, 2021 Board of Commissioner meeting minutes? So moved. We have a motion on the floor from Commissioner Kelly. Do I hear a second? Second. Second from Commissioner Walk. Can I have a roll call vote, please, Renee? Commissioner Walk? Aye. Commissioner Mobilio? I'm afraid I think he dropped Here, he, Renee. He just arrived. He just arrived. Okay, cool. Commissioner Mobilio? We're, we're talking about the meeting minutes, um, Matt. Okay, I can I can hear you now. I, I, I had to log back in a couple times, but it's working now. So you're, is that your vote for the approval of the meeting minutes? We're on roll call vote, Matt, for meeting minutes. Uh, um, well, I'm here and I vote in favor of the meeting minutes being approved. Okay. Um, Commissioner Seton? Yes. Commissioner Kelly? Aye. Commissioner Morgan? Aye. Motion carries. Meeting minutes approved. Thank you, everybody. Next um, on the agenda, we have no presentations, no ordinances. However, we do have a variety of resolutions for consideration and possible action this evening. First is a resolution granting preliminary final approval to a major plan entitled, I am never going to be able to say that correctly. So Renee or somebody, can you help me? 
it's the oh the um the mosque um of pennsylvania because i can't say the i can't pronounce it the shy atina ashiri jamat of pennsylvania dave how how did i do on that you're presenting this evening yeah i was just going to say mosque um <laughs> i think I, I think i might have did did all I right on that did all right um we will hopefully hear the proper pronunciation later. Um, so this is this application was before the Planning Commission at their December 17th meeting. Um, the property is located at 1500 Ridgeview Drive, so right behind the town hall. Um, the plan is proposes tearing down the existing mosque, um, replacing <laughs> the larger mosque. Uh, and parking lot and stormwater improvements related to that. Um, we note that we have not received the LVPC Planning Commission letter, um, which was a condition of approval. And then also we note that the timeline is up tonight. So if there's no action on the board's behalf, um, we would need a waiver from the time limitation to review the plan. Um, with that, I could hand it over to any representative for the application, if there's anybody here. Is there anybody here this evening to represent the mosque that would like to speak? All right, Randy, you might want to open the chat on that one just in case they can't. Let me type it in the chat. Um, we thank you. Did receive a, or if we haven't heard anything. Nope. Okay. Um, we did receive a acceptance of the conditions of the resolution. Um, so the applicant has expressed that they're okay with the conditions on the um, on the resolution. Dave, do you do you anticipate any um, concerns? I, I I don't, um, but I just thought I'd ask you from the LVPC since we haven't gotten that back yet. Um, as far as the LVPC, typically um, the reviews are done based on their land use plan um, and as long as it's basically for the most part you know I'm not going to put words in the LVPC's mouth but in general terms if it's an existing development and it's a redevelopment of that property it's typically found to be consistent um, so I you know and then they there's also a stormwater review that they do um, which is also kind of down the road um, so the letter that we're waiting on I don't anticipate a negative um, determination me either I just thought I'd, I'd ask in case there were any conversations that you might have had directly with them so that 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 answers my question are there any questions or comments on this particular um, resolution for consideration tonight from the board I just have one observation. I did have a resident um, ask me about this, and since the building currently stands at 16,000 square feet, and the plan is to raise it and then build a 26,000 square foot building in its place, um, the plan proposes to remove 13 parking spaces from this site. Um, and a, a resident advised that um, when there's an event here on this property, cars are frequently parked on the grass and lined up the street. So I just wanted to share that concern and ask um, Dave, maybe you could advise since we're making or they are proposing a building um, significantly larger, which would make sense that um, you know more more events or more people could be housed um, against the fact that 13 parking spaces will be removed from that site. Yeah, my my only comment on that would be that if it needed a waiver from the parking standards, um, it would have been included in the in the application. Um, 
so I believe it's it meets the parking requirements for a um, a mosque. Um, so I don't have anything, and I don't recall if that was brought up at the planning commission for discussion. Um, so I can't really comment too much on that. Diane, if if you don't mind, maybe I can help you. Um, the there was a surplus of parking spaces as compared to what was required based upon the building size now obviously um you know when they have large events they exceed what's normally required of a mosque but based upon the zoning data and the tables that they use they had additional parking spaces the reason for the removal of those spaces is that um they're adding a few more sidewalks around, so they wanted to mimic the impervious cover. So there was no change in stormwater from the site. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Any other questions from the board on this particular resolution for consideration? Any questions from the public? We do have the chat open if you can't. Have, if you have any questions. I am not seeing any. That being said, thank you, Dave. That being said, do I hear a motion to move forward with the resolution granting preliminary final approval to the major plan entitled um, the Mosque of Pennsylvania? So moved. We have a motion on the floor from Commissioner Kelly. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Uh, second from Commissioner Stetton. Can I have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Walk? Aye. Commissioner Mobilio? Aye. Commissioner Stetton? Aye. Commissioner Kelly? Aye. Commissioner Morgan? Aye. Motion carries. Thanks, Steve. All right, next this evening for consideration and possible action, we have a resolution granting preliminary final approval to a major plan entitled Proposed Parking Lot Improvements 798 Houseman Road. Dave. Yes, so this was another application that was at the December 17th meeting of the Planning Commission where the Planning Commission recommended approval. Um, property located at 798 Hausman. It's the Lehigh Valley Health Network building. Um, and it included driveway parking lot um, upgrades and stormwater. And um, I would note that in addition, this application like the last one, if there's no action, we would require a waiver from the time limitation. Um, to continue because we're up against the deadline as well. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions or comments from the board on this particular request this evening? All right, any questions from the public? Do we have the chat open, Randy? Yes, I believe. Disab no, it's disabled right now. There we go, now it's open, yes. Any questions from the public? Just a second. All right, hearing none, do I hear a motion moving forward with granting a preliminary final approval to a major plan entitled Proposed Parking Lot Improvement 798 Houseman Road? So moved. We have a motion on the floor from Commissioner Kelly. Do I hear a second? Second. Second from Commissioner Walk. Can I have a roll call vote, please, Renee? Commissioner Walk? Aye. Commissioner Mobilio? Aye. Commissioner Sutton? Aye. Commissioner Kelly? Aye. Commissioner Morgan? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Last but not least, under resolutions for consideration, we have a resolution amending resolution number. 2019-67, which granted preliminary final approval to a major plan entitled 1960 Herald Avenue to include an additional waiver granted to Saldo Section 312-39E. Dave, it's all you. 
Yes, so this is an application. Um, it was before the Board of Commissioners at the December 18th, 2019 meeting. Um, the application is for some lot consolidations and um, subdivisions to put in a bank of five townhouses. Um, they're requesting a waiver from that section of the saldo, um, which deals with the um, soil erosion and sediment control plans that um, are reviewed by the Lehigh County Conservation District. Um, in the memo, it kind of describes the the it, the saldo section. Um, staff has concerns that if these requirements are waived, there's really no capability to enforce the so erosion and sediment control plan. Um, and being that it is located in a, an, an existing de um, developed area, residential area, um, any soil erosion would definitely be felt and seen. Um, So we're, we have concerns about that. Um, and maybe Tony, I don't wanna put you on the spot. You can talk about kind of how the normal process is and what gets waived that they're, the, what they're requesting to be waived. Sure, sure. Um, in a normal process, uh, most of the land development projects, everything over an acre requires an MPDS permit, so you're required to go to the state. That's pretty standard. This is a different application. It's under an acre. Now, South Whitehall Township has entered into a mem uh, memorandum of understanding with the Conservation District that the township has agreed that every project regardless what size it is, would be submitted to the conservation district for their approval. In turn, the district has outlined some things that they will help the township with in terms of enforcement, some MS4 uh, items. So in every instance, we have had these projects, even though the, the small size, we have uh, requested that they go to the district and get their approval letter. Um, in this instance, uh, we will do the same. We'll be uh, consistent with every other project. I'm confused. Wait, Tony, we will be consistent or they're asking for a waiver from that? Uh, that, that I'm sorry, uh, you're correct. They are asking for a waiver not to go to the conservation district. Uh, the township engineer, our stance is that we would we would consider to be the township to, should be consistent with the process that's normally followed. The, the applicant okay. themselves is asking for a waiver for that process. I apologize. Okay, Under, understood. Thank you. Thank you. Is there is there anyone here um, from from the applicant tonight that that wanted to speak on the subject matter? Dave or Tony, do you know? I don't know. Yeah, this is Dave Kosako. I actually thought Mike, Mark Bradbury was on. He can speak better than me. But this project, this was submitted to the Conservation District a long time ago. And they said it does not meet their criteria, so they did not need to review it. Uh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, Tom. I mean, uh, Mr. Pisacco, uh based upon a conversation I had with the district, uh, my understanding is it, there was no application or fee submitted. Therefore, they uh, the district doesn't review that, um, and they put it in a drawer. So, because there's no MPDS permit, they might have uh, mentioned that, but uh, they don't review unless an application and a is is submitted along with the plan. All right, my understanding was that we gave it to them. And they did not want to, and they they felt no need to go any further. So, Mr. Pisaco, would it be possible if if we if we it's just a thought if we tabled this this evening that you could get this resolved, um, or is this one of the ones that needs an extension on it for? because it's met a deadline. Yeah, so- We had it, already gotten an extension. I'm not sure how, how much much longer we have. 
the, it, my notes say that it's up um, March 18th. So we would have another meeting between then. Um, so is that is that a can happen that quickly? I'm not sure. We may need to get another extension. Possibly, Dave, yes. Dave, yes. this is Greg Adams. Yes. That's great. Um, the deadline there is to record the plan by March 18th. Right now, if you don't grant the waiver, then they have to go to the LCCD to get their ENSC plan uh, reviewed and approved, and that's greater than a month's long process. So if you do table this and then come back and grant them the waiver, they should be close, although it would be a tight fit. If you do not grant the waiver, then they would need another extension guaranteed. Thank you, Greg. Sure. Didn't you Greg. receive a letter from, from the conservation district to the effect that they felt no need to review this? Dave, we, I did receive a letter from Mark Bradbury um, that the, the district sent him. Um, they were only looking at it, looking at it from their uh, requirements, uh, NPDES permit greater than an acre. Um, that does not match up with the township's requirements of looking at an ENSC plan if more than 5,000 square feet of space is disturbed or, or over 10,000 for a stormwater management plan. So their regulations did not require it. However, ours do. Why did it take you this long for this to come up? We could have had this done a year ago. Indeed. Um, the only thing that I had on this up to about a month ago was a transmittal of sending the plan over to LCCD. It said no more than that. We simply assumed that it was up for review and that we would receive a comment letter back. However, because no application nor fee were, was sent along with it, they didn't review it. They simply put it in a drawer and we never knew that up until a month or so ago. So here we are. All right, I, I obviously misunderstood. I, I thought they had no intention of reviewing it because it was not necessary, so I apologize. So in, in an effort to, to help um, move this along and, and, and get the information that's needed, um, I'll, I'll defer to, you know, um, Dave Pistacco and, and Dave Manhart and Greg, whatever you feel is um, the best approach, um, unless the board has another thought. But, you know, at this point, I think, you know, giving him the opportunity to get the information before we wave or don't wave makes sense. Any thoughts from the board? I agree. Matt, I, Diane, right, we'll, Joe. We'll move, it, we'll move as quickly as we can. Yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I certainly I think I they vote in favor of anything that isn't resolved. So, yeah. yeah so it's, I at this point, then, I, I think. Okay. Table. Excellent. Tabling it seems to be the consensus. So, um, hopefully, um, the team can work together and, and get you um, some resolution on this quickly. Um, sound like a plan? All right. Sounds good. All right. Great. Great. Thank you. All, All right, right. Thank you. You got it. Have a great evening. All right. Next Thanks, this everyone. evening, under motions, we have two motions for consideration. The first is a motion granting Upper Mukunji Township's request to allow the installation of an advanced warning sign per PennDOT specifications in South Whitehall Township right away. Renee. Yeah, this is, um, I had received notice from Township Manager Ibach in Upper Mukunji that they had done um, a culvert weight study um, on Crackersport Road. So this is a request to alert in the westbound truck drivers on Crackersport in South Whitehall of the um, advanced warning of the weight limit to the culvert. Um, Upper Mukunji has um, indicated that they are willing to provide and maintain the sign. Um, so again, that's what they're looking for. 
Public Works was okay with this, um, speaking with the operations team there. And then um, one of Tony um, Talaridi's suggestions was an ad a second advanced sign in the event a truck would need to turn around um, ahead of Eck Road. So Upper Mukunji has agreed to that as well. Excellent. Thanks, Renee. Any any questions or comments um, for Renee on this particular motion for consideration this evening from the board? Sounds like it makes sense to, to us. Any questions from the public? I just had one question, Commissioner Morgan. I'm sorry. Um, sure. So to, just to reiterate, Renee, you said that we will be posting one closer to Eck Road. Yes, in the yeah, in the in the event that um, in advance of Eck Road, um, in the event that a truck would need to turn around, that there'd be room before they got to the culvert area. Okay, very good. Thank you. I got it. Any questions from the public? All right. That being said, do I hear a motion to move forward granting the um, Upper McCunji's request to allow yeah. for the installation as explained? So moved. There's something in the chat. Oh, I, I'm, think, I don't there's see a anything question. in the chat. There is? I'm not seeing it. Why am I not seeing it? I'm not seeing the question in the chat. I believe it went to Neither. organize for some reason. I'm, I apologize. Is that you, Brian? That's me. <laughs> did you did you have the question, Brian? Yes, I did. So. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Two with your question. question. Uh, do you sure. know if uh, Upper McCungie is going to put advance warning signs along Blue Barn to prevent those trucks from getting down to that far? And also, maybe the township wants to consider putting signage closer to the former Covenant Transport truck terminal that's now up for lease to all interested parties that may want to utilize that facility to make them aware of, you know, they they would rather go towards 309 than that way, than have to go up Eck and then go to an intersection. And so it might be prudent to put another sign, you know, closer to the Covenant Transport uh, former location. Uh, those are my two comments. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Um, I'll defer to to the the team, Renee and Randy. Your thoughts on that, and and Tony maybe. Yeah, I mean, I think that's up for discussion. I think we can discuss that. Um, and Brian, I'm not quite sure. Um, I did not get word where Upper McClungy was putting them on Blue Barn or not. Uh, I'm pretty confident they will but I, I can reach out to Bob I got to call him on some other things for my work so I'll ask okay. him thank you okay thanks Brian we'll, we'll definitely take those other things under advisement good good information thank you all right um did we did we vote on that yet or did I you didn't vote I thought you had a motion we didn't. I oh, yeah I got confused because I can't see the comments um, all right, so was there anything else in the chat? Because I'm not seeing any chat comments. No. Okay, great. All right, so we had a motion on the floor from Commissioner Kelly, I think that was. And did we have a second from Commissioner Stetton? Was that you who spoke up after that? Yep. All right, so we have a motion and a motion from Commissioner Kelly, a second from Commissioner Stetton. Can I have a roll call vote, please, Renee? Commissioner Walk. Aye. Commissioner Mobilio? Aye. Commissioner Sutton? Aye. Commissioner Kelly? Aye. Commissioner Morgan? Aye. Motion carried. Wonderful. Commissioner All Morgan, right. Next. Yes. Commissioner, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, for the re the last resolution for the 1960 Herald Avenue that we tabled, um, I believe we need to make a motion that the board tabled that because it is listed as a resolution on our agenda. Um, yeah, we can definitely make a motion to table that. Good point. All right, so we'll go back to that one. Um, I'll make a motion. We table um, resolution amending the 1960 Herald House. Do I hear a second? Second. 
We have a second from Commissioner Kelly. Can I have a roll call vote? Commissioner Walk? Aye. Commissioner Mobilio? Aye. Commissioner Seton? Aye. Commissioner Kelly? Aye. And Commissioner Morgan? Aye. Motion carried. To table that particular um, resolution for consideration. Thank you. Okay. So next this evening, under motions, we have a motion for consideration requesting permission to proceed with replacement of park amenities. Mr. Cookett, welcome. Hello, good evening. Um, so this is dating back to uh, early August there when Tropical Storm Isaias uh, hit Coverbridge Park and it was uh, one of the worst storms that park's seen uh, from my understanding in 80 years. Um, it did do a lot of damage to a lot of our park amenities down there, um, including either completely removing, washing away, or damaging um, 40 picnic tables, three grills, six player branches, and 20 trash cans. Uh, I worked with finance and got a handful of quotes to replace this uh, equipment, and we are respectfully requesting that the board approve uh, the purchase of this equipment from the park catalog in the amount of $52,462.32. All right. Thanks, Mike. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Mike, how much money did we get for, for insurance for that? Scott hasn't given me the final figure. I believe it was around $80,000, but I do believe some of that may have been used for the um, property damage off of Brickyard, or I'm sorry, Ironbridge as well. Okay, so Mike, we're not quite sure how much. I answer that. Hang on. Through the tropical storm, we received a total of eighty-three thousand uh, dollars for three different locations. Covered Bridge Park uh, was fifty-nine thousand thirty-nine dollars. Okay, so we got all the money that we need to replace everything has been is covered by insurance. Correct. Correct. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, any other questions or comments from the board? I just had a comment or question, um, Mike, please. So understanding the damage um, here in your report, obviously we had damage from Superstorm Sandy again. Uh, just moving forward, um, is there a plan that the township has in mind to secure these some of these items differently or locate them differently in the park? So if we do have another storm event that causes this type of damage, again, we may be able to preserve some of these items. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and even so, these are commercial grade equipment, and they do, you know, they take two or three uh, adults to move. They weigh close to 200 pounds, these tables. Um, and we were quite frankly blown away that like 16 tables under Pavilion 3 all just disappeared, washed away. Um, so that just tells you the amount of water that was down there and the force that it had behind it. Um, in addition, in other spots, what we had done was chain link them to some steel bolts in the concrete pad to keep them in place. Um, but again, the force of the water actually broke a lot of the tables that were chained down. So our only option will be, if we're seeing a storm of that magnitude coming through, will be to actually remove the equipment and get it to higher ground. Oh, okay, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions or comments? Any questions or comments from the public? All right, seeing any in the chat? All right, that being said, do we hear a motion to move forward for, with permission to proceed with the replacement of the park amenities through the park catalog at the amount of $52,462.32? So moved. A motion on the floor from Commissioner Kelly. Do I hear a second? Second. Second from Commissioner Walk. Can I have a roll call vote, please, Renee? Commissioner Walk? Aye. Commissioner Mobilio? Aye. Commissioner Seton? Aye. Commissioner Kelly? Aye. Commissioner Morgan? Aye. Motion carries. All right. Looking forward to the summer months and sitting at those new tables, Mike. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> All right. Next this evening, under correspondence and information items, under boards and commissions, um, I'll, I'll, I'll report out again. We were 
um, typically doing this at the first meeting of the month, but I'll do it. I'll do it for both meetings. Um, we have one planning commission um, position um, vacant open right now, two civil service alternate positions and one shade tree. We um, have some applications that we have received um, and we are still accepting um, applications if anybody's interested. And we will begin um, some additional interviews very here, um, very soon here in the near future. So again, um, our, I don't want to steal anybody's thunder. So you will see this also advertised on our new website. I'm not going to go into detail because I know that's going to be somebody else's discussion here in the, in the meeting a little later. So you'll also see those um, recognized, those positions recognized in our new website um, that'll happen this week. So that's our update on boards and commissions. Um, Mr. Morgan? I'll, I'll, yeah. I, I just have a quick question. How many applications? How many applications do we have so far for the planning commission opening? We have um, so far for the planning commission opening one, two, I believe it's five. And we've, I've already reached out to, um, to Tracy um, to talk about getting some uh, interviews set up. So at five at this point. Thank you. You got it. You got it. All right, next this evening, um, we have our Civil Service Commission report for year 2020. Oh, yes. Yeah. Hi. Um, I have a brief report out of uh, the recent Finance Committee meeting. That, oh, that very like good, thanks. Thanks, Mike, that'd be great. Okay. Go ahead. It, it's pretty short. Um, so our Finance Committee met uh with the auditor and members of the finance committee are commissioners diane kelly and myself um and from the uh township management uh renee bickle and scott brett and we met with uh the two representatives from herbine who's the auditor back on february 11th um so we had our first meeting to discuss uh we discussed several subjects but primarily the outstanding audits and as a committee we're beginning to unpack the last 10 years history of you know why the audits uh haven't been done since uh 2011. um the staff aims to make positive changes uh to get everything in line to meet the audit statutory requirements in the future uh and a lot of those changes uh are already in progress um the, the township and the auditor are targeting uh, the 2016-17 audit completion by the end of March of this year uh, and the 2018-2019 audits completion by the end of June of this year. Uh, so that's good news and we certainly need to hold on to uh, that time frame. Um, as a committee, um, now that we had that meeting, uh, we're now committed to hold monthly meetings uh, to get updates on the process for completing the audits, uh, and also to secure the improvements that have already been identified uh, that are required to do the future audits uh, and it's on time uh, per the law. Um, of course, our monthly meetings will address other South Whitehall Township financial issues, um, such as the uh, ongoing COVID-19 uh, COVID impact on our uh, budget performance. So that's our, our short update of our, our first uh, reconvened Finance Committee meeting after several months, and uh, this one being with the auditor. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Any questions or comments from the board? All right. I failed to mention I have a I have an attachment here some updates that I um, I wanted to mention some upcoming meetings on Thursday February 18th we have our planning commission meeting at 7:30 on Monday February 22nd we have our green advisory council meeting at 6 p.m. on Tuesday February 23rd we have another planning commission meeting um, at 7:30. And on Wednesday, um, we have February 24th, um, we have a Board of Commissioners workshop meeting on Ware's Dam that starts at six o'clock. 
On Wednesday, February 24th, um, we also have a zoning hearing board meeting starting at 7 o'clock. And on Monday, March 1st, we have a public safety commission meeting starting at 7 p.m. All right. Commissioner Morgan, I just had a quick question about the schedule for next Wednesday with the Where's Dam workshop being scheduled at 6 p.m. And then we have the zoning hearing at 7. Um, the last time we had a workshop back to back like that, we um, had limited time. Is the situation going to be the same or do we have a different platform to be able to have? We have a, we have a different we're platform. Utilizing, we're utilizing a different platform. So yep. the zoning hearing board will be utilizing the township's typical platform that they would typically see. Um, so for the Where's Dam workshop, make sure to go to the website. It's a different link. Um, it's a WebEx conference. So, um, so again, you'll need to look at the homepage for that. And that was also advertised as the link. With the link. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. All right, so um, moving on to the Civil Service Commission report for year 2020. Renee or Scott, I'm not sure who's presenting on this one this evening. I, I'm not quite sure is Scott Hoke is, I don't believe is here. I didn't know if it was Scott Barrett, Scott Hoke. Oh no, this is the Civil Service Commission. This is the annual report that civil service prepares and it just kind of goes Excellent. over the, the year of civil service. Um, okay. And what, yeah, this is what, not me. Yeah, what civil service accomplished <laughs> in 2020 and the meetings they had. So. so Renee, would you, if Scott Hope's not with us this evening, would you mind just giving a real brief on it? That would be great. Yeah, I mean, it just goes over. Um, Randy, can you scroll up the screen? Um, yeah, it just goes over the um, what the board did. Uh, Randy, can you roll down? It talks about the reorganization each year, um, who the officers were in the um, in civil service, how many times we met. Um, we did have Connie Kunda resign. She retired from the commission after several years of service. Um, and just again, we did go over um, and create an eligibility list during the course of the year. Um, and that's really it. We met in all virtual meetings. I'd this like board, to note um, again, that we do have two alternate positions um, available on civil service. So if there is anybody interested, make sure and put in your application. Yeah, if you're interested, this board typically meets around one o'clock in the afternoon. All right. Thanks, Renee. Any questions or comments from the board? All right. Any from the public? All right. Moving on. Oh my gosh, this is this is amazing. Um, so we have nothing under direction and discussion items this evening. Um. We'll shoot right into our old business. Uh, we already mentioned we have a workshop set up for Where's Dam um, this on um, on the 24th at 6 p.m. Um, but Renee, I'll defer to you on the campus renovation project and credit cards. Okay. Commissioner Morgan. So, yes, yes, Commissioner Wall. Quick, quick question on Where's Dam. Um, so we're already aware of this. Um, I believe Commissioner Kelly requested the uh, the, uh, the the report that was submitted uh, about Where's Dam, and uh, it'd be real good if we could get that. Uh, you know, as the commissioners, if we could get that like sort of now, uh, so we have at least a, a week to take a look at it prior to the uh, workshop. Thank you, Mike. Yes, as I had discussed in an email back to you, I have worked with our engineers on our packet, and you'll be receiving that in the next day or so. Okay, thank you. All right. All right, Renee, what do we got on our campus renovation and credit cards? Um, campus renovation, um, we continue to be almost at the finish line. Um, next week, we are anticipating certificate of occupancies for 
the PD and PW areas, and also on March 5th, the administrative level of the building, um, we're anticipating um, certificate of occupancies. Um, really, they're finalizing right now, just, you know, the, it's the finishing touches around. The public meeting room is not going to be, that will be the last part that's complete. Every other um, portion of the building will be completed, but the um, public meeting room will be the last, and it's sort of an isolated area to the left. So again, that's an area that won't be ex accessed um, right away. Um, we anticipate that a little bit later into March. Um, we are there in the process of setting up the furniture. Um, and so again, we're anticipating those certificates of occupancy. In terms of project costs at this point, we are $1,000 um, off of the projected costs. So again, our total construction cost was eight million three hundred fourteen thousand and we are there so um minus a thousand dollar not quite a thousand dollar difference so oh excellent excellent job great um in right. terms and credit cards rolling into credit cards um i believe at the next meeting we're going to have a um, demonstration of the credit card payment. There will also be a YouTube video on the credit card payment. There will be a few steps that you need to go through um, to initiate that credit card payment. And the, um, I guess I'm just going to roll into my report a little bit because not to steal Dave's thunder, but we are going to show you tonight. Um, the cre the website does go live tomorrow. Um, we have worked hard that the team has worked hard to get information there um, it's not going to be perfect the first day it's continued to be a work in progress um, but it will be up live tomorrow hopefully by four o'clock in the afternoon um, I think I believe Dave is going to show us a little bit of it tonight and then rolling into the next meeting once the website is live you will see the um, the credit cards we finalized um, a, a bank account today with the credit card payments, and so that will be able to be there. But again, we will have a video on the process that residents will need to utilize to um, activate each one of their accounts for credit cards. So you will see that at the next meeting. But um, website is up tomorrow. Um, also wanted to let you know that we did receive word from Advanced Disposal that they will not be collecting trash tomorrow. We just received word from them this evening. Um, transfer station has closed, so trash will not be picked up in the township tomorrow. They will go to a Friday and Saturday pickup. Um, again, the transfer station had closed due to weather. So, um, and that might just get lost on the website at this point as we're moving a transition. We, we will put it there, but but again, wanted to let people know in our transition, um, but no trash pickup tomorrow. Thanks, Renee. Mm -hmm. Any questions from Renee from the board? All right, any questions from the public? Uh, hi, this is Mark Bradbury. I apologize, I couldn't be on at 7 p.m. I uh, had some uh, issues with my wife in the hospital. Um, I didn't get a chance to uh, hear what the decision was for the Herald Avenue waiver for the uh, LCCD. So Mark, Mark, what we decided to do is we made a motion to table it so that um, uh, Mr. Pasako was on the line and to for you to gather some information um, that was still pending and then come back to for a final. Okay. Did, did you get the letter from Greg Adams that I sent from LCCD? That I sent in, um, I know, last week? Greg, I'll defer to you and Dave. I'm looking in the packet to, for what is no, specifically. You did not. Tori, oh. you did not get that letter. Okay. Oh, you're okay. 
Well, that explains why this didn't go through because uh, Kevin Frederick from the Conservation District sent us a letter that stated that we did submit a courtesy copy to the Conservation District and that the um, Conservation District did not need to review the uh, sediment erosion could plan because it did not meet the regulatory requirements for them to review it. And that's what we based our assumption on that we, you know, had gotten uh, information back from LCCD. Um, I'm surprised that you didn't get that in your packet. So, Mark, yeah. I, be I oh. believe that, go ahead, Greg. I'm, I'm sorry, Mark. Um, yeah. That that letter got lost and I emailed you back this afternoon asking you to replace it. And apparently you didn't check your email between then and now. No, so I've been was, in the hospital with my wife. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> no, no problem. Out. I understand. I understand. We, we, we did discuss that and we pointed out that LCZD has their set of regulations and we have ours. And although your development does not meet the LCCD requirements for plan review on ENSC plans, it does meet the township's requirement for an ESC, ENSC plan review. And we have a letter. How did we call that, uh, Tony? Um, a memorandum, memorandum of understanding? That's correct. Yeah, so so basically, when we need uh, an ENSC plan review, it goes to the LCCD because they are the experts in stormwater management. Well, they're actually not experts in stormwater management. They're only experts in sediment and erosion control and BMPs. They will not review stormwater. Um, they, the, um, that's why they, they def really don't like these smaller projects. Uh, on many occasions, we've discussed it with them. They're sort of a nuisance. Um, and I understand why the township has that in their ordinance. You know, if somebody was to develop a piece of ground, uh, you know, directly adjacent to a high quality stream or something where, you know, there was a potential for some real disaster. Um, it gives the township the opportunity to say, you know what, even though in our ordinance, it says that the, you know, board of commissioners can waive this. In this particular situation, we don't think it's wise to waive it um, because you're right against a stream or, or you're, uh, there's a neighbor behind you that is directly downhill from you with a beautiful swimming pool and gardens. Um, and I can see how on a case by case basis, that would be absolutely necessary. You know, in our case, uh, we have nothing but a, uh, uh, basically a rubble pile, um, a lot of debris and brush in an abandoned alley behind us um, that, you know, with the size of our project, you know, we, we feel that, uh, obviously, we don't have that particular situation. Um, now, you said it was tabled until you got further information. Yeah. What information so Mark, would you I, be looking for? Mark, there, we tabled this discussion um, for our next meeting to, to allow time. Mr. Pasaco was on the call. He agreed to that, um, to gather the, um, the information that, that Greg is referring to that's required by the township so you can bring it back at our next meeting. Okay. Um, okay. We, all right. Well, is that we, two we, weeks from now? That's in, that's it. It would be the first and third Wednesday of every month. Oh, okay. So that's, yep. that's not a month from now. It's just a couple of weeks. Nope. Okay. Just a couple of weeks. So you'll still have time. So, um, yeah. So Mr. Pasako is aware and, um, you'll have some time to work with staff to get the information you need so that you can move forward. Okay. Okay. Thanks. I apologize right. again you got for being late. It. But thank yep. you for no listening. problem. Okay. No problem. Hope all yep. is well. Take care. That's yep. your way. Thank wife. you. Thank you very much. Um, you got it. All right. So we are going to move then um, into our community development report for this evening. Dave. Hello, Dave. Hello, Dave, Dave Manhart. Where'd you go? <laughs> Um, so you can't hide I, from me, Dave Manhart. Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think what Renee was referring to was the website going live tomorrow. Um, I've had some personal issues just as far as, you know, wanting everything to be perfect and, 
um, my our staff has kind of gotten me to the point where at some point we need to rip the band-aid off and just go with it um, so we're at that point we've done a pretty good job of bringing over all of the information from the old site um, I think I can share my screen let me get this up here So we've given some um, indications and you've seen some of it. Um, basically everything's set up, you know, all the structure is virtually the same as far as departments. Um, boards and commissions all have their own pages. Um, services is a new page um, that was part of the Granicus platform. And then the I want to. Um, so those two we're really still kind of working on um, and fine-tuning those. Um, this is a hero slide, they call it, so it can scroll between images and text. Um, we have our most popular buttons. Um, these can be changed out based on clicks and, you know, whether we want things more readily available. Um, we currently have the seasonal work map up. So this is for um, snow plowing or leaf collection. This also can turn off and on um, so we can use different things. We have our news section, which we're currently populating um, with some of the news. Um, should have that before we go live. Um, and then all the events are in there. So that's the basic structure of the homepage. Um, Boards and commissions set up all the pages in a similar manner. Um, so there's the standard text and board members, um, and then a link to that commission's meetings um, all show up on that page. And then additionally, all the documents associated with that board or commission are available on that page. Um, and it's just a folder structure, so you can get to packets, agendas, and minutes really easily just from that Board of Commission page. Um, so we're going to use that as kind of our archive until we get the next piece of the puzzle, um, the peak agenda management, so that will handle meetings moving forward, but this is kind of how we'll handle the meetings, the past meetings. Um, just a quick peek at the services. Um, this is some text that describes services from the um, existing website. So we just kind of, I kind of put in different icons and links to different pages on the website. Um, I want to, right now we just have apply for um i think my screen's not sized right so i'm missing the um contact um so the idea here is you know if we want to apply for a township job board of commission um so these action words will all be here um so that a resident or a business owner wants to apply for something they know Oh, there's a pie for it. I can just go to that. Um, so that's kind of how it's set up. The We've been working hard on getting a lot of the um, past documents up and, you know, populating the web page. Um, and we're in a good place to go live with it and start working on some of the enhancements that are available with the Granicus platform. Um, we have an advanced training coming up in a couple weeks that'll kind of go over some more advanced functionality that we can start incorporating into it. Um, oh, one of the neat things about this website is it, it's called a responsive web page. Um, so it's, it's designed to go between different devices 
um, and we can quickly check and see what it looks like on different devices. Um, so we can check and see what it looks like on a tablet or an iPhone. Um, so it gives us that uh, capability to know what it's going to look like on each of the different platforms. And I think that's it. Um, it, it does take some time for the, um, the DNS entry to change over. Um, we're hoping by, I think, by the afternoon, it should be all changed over. Um, if it's not coming up as the old one or as the new one, it could just be a cached copy. So you would just have to refresh to try and find the new one. Um, so, you know, as with any website, the most stressful part is the go live. And then, you know, then we can get it out there and we can start improving it as we as we go dave it looks fantastic and we're only seeing the top of it so that's that's excellent thank you you're welcome all right look forward to that tomorrow all right anything else dave um comp plan so we the survey has closed. Um, we received over 600 respondents. Um, we posted a kind of a last call um, as recommended by the Planning Commission, and that got us another 50 or so respondents. So that was great. Um, we're currently analyzing the results and developing the, you know, the public input development scenario. Um, based on those inputs of how to grow, how should we grow and where should we grow. Um, so that'll be forthcoming. We are working with Michael Baker to launch a kickoff meeting um, for these working groups. And the working groups will get into a little more detail um, of that meeting and you know expectations and um, things that'll come out of that meeting. It'll be a digital platform with breakout sessions. Um, so we're pretty excited about how that's gonna roll out. Um, we are currently working on getting some subject matter experts to help guide the discussions of these different, um, guide discussions of the different subject areas as specified in the MPC. Dave, with the working groups, are you, um, you know, we talked about this at the last meeting, just making sure that you're, you know, we're making sure to touch on every, every um, stakeholder um, in the community, all different aspects of stakeholders to make sure that they're all represented in these working groups. We're, we're making sure that that happens because do you yeah. have a set meeting date yet we or is that still? We don't have okay. a meeting date. That's kind of contingent on the subject matter experts. Um, and okay. But as soon as we get that, we will put it out and launch it. Um, one of the great things about um, online meetings is we can record, um, and those recordings will be put out there on the web um, on our new website um, so that people that can't make the meetings will be able to virtually attend and watch recordings. Um, there will be some opportunity for engagement post-meeting um, with surveys and some other online capabilities that we're gonna work into those meetings. Great, thanks Dave. Any questions for Dave? Any questions from the public? There was a chat, and I guess chats are going to organizer for some reason tonight. Yeah, because I, I can't see any of the chats. So what what the chat, is there a question? Cindy Smith asks, Mike, or, Mike Baker from L-Tri-C. Um, Michael Baker, it's, it's Michael Baker International is the engineering firm. I'm hesitant to call them just an engineering firm. They're a big multinational um, 
firm that has a office in um, Allentown and they do planning work, engineering work, architecture, landscape architecture. So they're a pretty multifaceted firm. Um, and because they are such a big firm, they have a lot of um, neat, neat toys and widgets that we have available to us, um, especially for this digital engagement piece. Um, so we're really looking forward to well, working with them. Um, I'm sorry, I I worked with Mike Baker at L-Tri-C and I think your website, and I design websites, I think it looks really good. And Mike Baker used to work at L-Tri-C and that's why I asked, I'm sorry to take up your time. No, no problem. No problem so, at all. The website platform is Granicus and they're a government solution. Um, so they have experience with government websites. Um, and incorporating in, you know, some of the other pieces would be agendas and minutes. Um, so we're looking forward to getting that rolling as well. Great, thanks, Dave. Thank Very you. All right. Thank you. So um, a, a little shift tonight. Um, I apologize, Scott. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, because I should have hit this under direction and discussion, but it's related to to finance. Um, we do have our partners um, from the Chamber of Commerce here this evening, Ashley and, and Jess, um, who we're going to give a brief report out on our small business COVID um, grant program that's rolling right now. So, um, Ashley and, and Jess, the floor is yours um, just to report out on where we stand. Yes. Hey, ladies. Hello, hello, good evening, commissioners. Uh, Ashley and I are very excited to give you an update on where we are on this partnership for our small business grant program made possible by all of you. Um, again, we cannot emphasize enough that we've talked to many businesses. Um, actually, Renee had given us the business directory of over 500 businesses, um, and we've been making uh, cold calls uh, because we don't have emails for every Everybody telling them about this application and, and this opportunity for them to apply. I'm happy to report um, we've had 15 businesses and applications completed. And when I say completed, means their um, W-9s and their business license, the things that uh, the attachments that we need to complete it. So there are other businesses that have applied, but they're not completed until we have the supporting documents. Um, so over the next couple of days too as well, we will be continuing to make those cold calls, feed on the street, um, hopefully, you know, get out there on Friday with the weather that we have tomorrow, but really informing them about this opportunity. As we know, not everybody has social media, not everybody is reading their emails right now. So these cold calls um, have been really good to connect with the business owners and tell them about the opportunity. Uh, again, I just want to thank you for your leadership. Um, these business owners are reaching out to us and we do have some comments uh, right from the application so that you could hear from them how much this means. So I'm going to turn it over to Ash. Ashley. Thanks, Jess. As Ashley mentioned, we're doing cold calls, but in addition to that, our advertising or marketing to get the word out, social media, as you've hopefully seen, um, we've been posting a lot on community pages, the Chambers pages, um, all forms, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, things like that. Also, thank you to like media outlets like The Morning Call for spreading this information. And um, we are also sharing via email the application link with members, but also non-members whose information we have on file, whether they have been members or prospective members. One thing we also wanted to share with you was a quote from one of the businesses. Um, so they have a section where they fill in the reason for applying for the grant. So this person is explaining what they're using the funding for. And the very last line says, Heartfelt thanks to South Whitehill Township for acknowledging the plight of small businesses and making this program available. So thank you to all of you five commissioners for your desire to support our businesses and thank you to the staff for helping with this as well. Um, you can see right then there within our first 15 applicants, we had someone who expressed their thanks. So thank you all for your leadership with this. 
And I will say uh, the communication that we've had through the phone calls, um, and we email them immediately with the link and the guidelines, which again is hosted on the Greater Chambers page uh, as we are seeing applications come in, but people are applying right away. Uh, so it, it is. It, it tells me that the need is still there and any little bit will help them. So we just wanted to give you an update on kind of where we are again, 15 completed. Uh, we have many more that have applied Applied. However, we just are we're, we're presenting the 15 completed at this point because we have all their attachments. Ladies, all right. Any questions or comments for Ash or Jeff? Great job! Thanks for all your hard work on this. Look forward to hearing more. So, good, good job. All right, Scott. Sorry. <laughs> all good, all good. Excellent, thanks. Good evening, commissioners. In terms of the finance department and where we're at, um, as was stated before from Mike about the uh, finance committee meeting, um, we had a productive meeting where we discussed uh, primarily the audits and our initiatives to uh, rectify the situation uh, from 10 years ago. So. Uh, right now, our main focus is audit 17 and 18, and uh, that will soon shift to 19 and 20 um, as as we have time to, to get into those. Um, another thing, another area that we are focusing our time is in terms of financial reporting. Um, we're going to make uh, some changes just to help the, just to, just to help you as a board um, better understand how the numbers for uh, the financial statements look. I think there's just some efficiencies that, that we, uh, we've we identified that it, it'll just be better. Um, so we're, we're going to be able to present that uh, to the board in your next uh, financial statement packet uh, for the, the January financials that we're still working through right now. Um, so that's one area. Another thing we're working on is taking a, a hard, deep look at our business privilege uh, program. Um, we're we're going to work with uh, Dave Manhart in community development to explore the idea of of a Munis module for the business privilege program, uh, and and just to get all our information um, f as we you know get further encompassed with our enterprise resource planning tool. Um, I think that'll be a, a good direction we can go with that. So those are those are the main things that that we're involved in. Um, there's a lot of other small small projects that we're involved in, but but not so much uh, not so much pressing as as the audits. So that's our that's our main priority and that's our main focus right now. Hey Scott. Yes, Mike. Just just a clarification. You said the primary focus is on 2017-18, and then you'll get on to 2019. The, I believe the reason you didn't mention 2016 is because the township work is done and it's been turned over to the auditor. So that, that is correct. That's, yeah, that's a little clarification. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, yep, that is correct. And uh, in terms of 17 and 18, there's there's a just a few wrap up items on the 17 uh, sections, and 18 has a little bit more work than 17 does. But we're we're almost through 17. So I I've, I see the light at the end of the tunnel in terms of a few of these projects, which is really good and encouraging for me. Um, as this has been a, a huge focus of my efforts here at the township. And so it's it's good, it's healthy for me to see a growth, especially uh, during February where we're scheduled to get more snow and it's you know sometimes hard to see progress. Thank you, Scott. Okay, thanks, Scott. Any questions for Scott from the board? All right, any from the public? And I can't see the chat, so um, Randy or Mike, if you guys are seeing it. Assuming there's none. All right, so we're going to move right into park and recreation. Mike? Uh, Commissioner Morgan, I'll go ahead and report out for parks and rec tonight, if that's okay. That'd be fantastic. Thanks, Randy. Sure, no problem. I just want to draw everybody's attention to a few uh, important upcoming dates for the Parks and Rec Department. Uh, April 17th, we're going to have our, uh, I believe it's the 
fourth annual Youth Fishing Derby down at Covered Bridge Park. Uh, we are always looking for volunteers for that event. So if you're interested, please reach out to Mike and uh, he can get you all set up. Um, also in April, we have our first public meeting for the Kohler Ridge Park Master Plan. Please mark your calendars for that. Uh, again, that's going to take place on April 22nd at 6 p.m. That's likely going to be a virtual meeting. More information will be posted on our website for that. Uh, there will be ample opportunities throughout this process for public involvement, feedback, comments, uh, surveys, all types of things to, to gather as much information we can from our residents to make sure this turns into the park that everybody hopes it does. Um, and then leading right into May, we're hopeful to cut the ribbon for the Cover Bridge Park Playground that was started last year. We've got a few uh, small items to wrap up, uh, but that project is nearing completion as well. Yay. Thanks, Randy. Yeah. All right, oh, any questions sorry, from the board? Oh, one I more? Do, I do got one more thing. I wanted to let everybody know we are uh, starting to hire for the summer playground program. So if you know any uh seniors in high school or college or college students that are looking for a summer job um they have a lot of fun in this position so please spread the word we're looking for applications um and more information is on our website located under employment opportunities thanks randy um all right any questions or comments for randy All right, any from the public? Okay, moving right along. Chief Dorney, what do you got for us? Good evening, commissioners. Tonight, uh, I'll talk some, about some stats. Uh, we handled 1,196 calls for service and wrote those reports in the month of January, which was an increase of 146 reports compared to 2020. Uh, as usual, the number one call type that we handled for the month was EMS calls with 216. Um, we had 57 reported crimes, which was a decrease of 33 compared to 2020, um, with the most uh, frequent crime being shoplifting with nine. Um, the UCRs by day, for some reason, are Mondays are our busiest day that we face um, with uh, 12 crimes on a Monday. And a lot of that, somebody asked us that question at the Crime Watch meeting last night. And uh, we believe that it turns out most of the times over the weekends, people don't check their cars. Um, some businesses that are not open on the weekends, they come back on a Monday morning and they find that something occurred over the weekend. So that's when they report it. And that's when it shows up on our UCR reporting. So um, that would kind of be the answer to that. Um, we had 24 arrests for the month. Um, and again, some of these stats are a little difficult because we did just switch over to our new Mark 43 records management system. So we're still working out some of the bugs with uh, getting some of the, the statistics put out to the public. So I do want to address a couple things that we have going on with the police department. Um, very near and dear to my heart, uh, June 21st through the 25th will be the third annual Youth Police Academy that we're going to be hosting again. And it's filling up very quickly. We already have, I believe, 22 applications in and uh, submitted. So um, we do still have some openings. So the information's on our website, as well as I believe Jason put it on our, our social media pages. Um, we have some applications. You can just reach out to, to Jason Grozier via email or phone, and he can get that to you immediately. So we can get that squared away. Another highlight that we have is that we just hired another police officer who started this past Monday. And she is, in fact, a township resident and also Parkland High School graduate, Monica Minkevich. Um, and uh, when you see her name and spell it, um, people will not call her that, but they will uh, figure out the, the proper pronunciation is Minkevich. So we're happy to have her on board. She has the Act 120 certification and is starting her FTO program as soon as she gets uniforms. Um, she'll have about two weeks of administrative duties, learning policy, some prep work that she has to do. She was previously employed as a part-time police officer in Marlboro Township in Montgomery County. And uh, she's a recent graduate of the Allentown Police Academy and the staff out there spoke very highly of her. So we are very happy to get her on board and get her started in the community. So um, next year, you'll see two brand new female police officers on the road in the city of, or in the, the township. Um, we have another, 
female that's in the academy in the in the Allentown Police Academy currently who will graduate in June and uh, we'll start her field training program in July. So you'll have two brand new police officers out there on the road by the end of the year. So very happy happy about that. Okay, that was great. And that's all. Um, I'll just throw out a little shout out. I, I think it was the very first um, virtual crime watch meeting that we had. Um, that was last night. Was that last night? I don't, can't, don't even know what night it is. Yes, anymore, last night. I think that was last night. And um, Jason and, and Steve did a phenomenal job on that. And it was, um, it was highly attended. That was fantastic. So great job on that, for sure. Um, any questions for the chief from the board? All right, any questions um, from the public? All righty. Next, we will go to Randy. Do you have anything to report out on public work? Sorry, I was muted. Yes, I do have a few things. Uh, Couple quick project updates. There, there's three main projects we're working on right now in the Public Works Department. Uh, first and foremost is the manhole to manhole sewer lining project. Uh, we are lining approximately 1,500 feet of a 21 inch interceptor line on Dorney Park Road, about 300 feet of the Sharersville line. Uh, these have all been TV'd um, for inspection. We don't have a, we, we still have a to be determined. Um, project start date, uh, but obviously once we get more information on that from the contractor, we will make sure to post information on our website and update the board as we um, we have that information. Uh, we may have some minor road closures for a very short period of time, but we are going to try to control those uh, closures with flagmen to keep traffic flowing. Any uh, road closure we may end up having for this project will obviously be posted on our website. Uh, for ample notice to our residents and motorists through the township. Um, we have ordered our VFDs for Jacoby, uh, Jacoby Water Station. We're about six to eight weeks out for that project, so we'll uh, advise the board when, when that continues progress. Um, and last but not least, we are on our uh, water risk and resiliency report uh, with our engineer, Spot Stevens and McCoy. Uh, that report tip typically takes a look at your overall system for any deficiencies and any needed additional security measures. Uh, so those are three of the main things we're working on right now in, in public works in terms of capital projects. Randy, any questions from the board um, for Randy? All right, any questions from the public? And I'll defer to um, Randy for any that pop up. And I apologize um, to to the audience this evening. We had to disable um, our our chat viewing of the names. Um, some individuals had put inappropriate and rather rude names um, in there, so we disabled the names, which has affected our chat. So only the organizer can see it. So if there's no questions from the public, I can move on. All right, Tony, do we have anything from our engineer this evening? Uh, we're continuing to stay busy. We have uh, four plans on the planning commission this month, uh, two actual two meetings we're having. Um, but we're continuing to review projects, um, trying to close out some of the things that are hanging, especially in these months that the construction has stopped. Uh, hopefully the weather gets a little bit better. We can wrap up some items. and. Uh, you know, assisting uh, Mike and Herb in uh, public works uh, whenever they need anything. So that's all I have. Okay. Any questions for Tony from the board? All right. Any from the public? All right. All right. Next this evening, we oh, do we have something? No, I just said thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, okay. You got it, Tony. You got it. All right. Next this evening, we have the opportunity um, for courtesy of the floor. This is the opportunity for anybody in the audience to approach the board on a non-agenda item. Um, Randy or Mike, whoever's um, operating, or Glenn, whoever's operating the um, organizer, 
I'll just, um, if you could just advise me if there's anybody who requests courtesy of, courtesy of the floor this evening. Hearing none. All right. I will note that our invoices and purchasing requisitions have been reviewed by our township manager and the director of finance. We do need a motion this evening to authorize that our checks be issued um, to pay our bills as tabulated. Do I hear said motion? So moved. We have a motion on the floor from Commissioner Kelly. Do I hear a second? I'll make a second, second. Second from Commissioner Morgan. And can I have a roll call vote, please, Renee? Commissioner Walk? Aye. Commissioner Mobilio? Aye. Commissioner Sutton? Aye. Commissioner Kelly? Aye. Commissioner Morgan? Aye. Motion carries. We have no executive session plan for this evening. I need a motion to adjourn, and I want to know it is 828. I am so proud of this team, I could just scream. So, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. I'll make the motion. <laughs> motion from Commissioner Kelly, and I think I heard a second from Commissioner Stetton, and all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Have a fantastic evening, everybody. Um, be careful out there in the weather. <laughs>